Here's why Warren Buffett is so successful. Mike, do you know why? I don't, tell me. It's time invested. I know it's not sexy, but it's time invested. Okay. He has been investing since he was 11. Can you imagine? At 11, I was kicking soccer balls around my yard. That's impressive. I, I actually had no idea. Yeah, he was investing since 11, and he's 90 some odd now. And still eating McDonald's and, and Diet Cokes. And, yep, and, and still living in the same house he purchased when he was a young guy yep. like us. So it's it's insanely impressive, but it's it's just the time. It's, it's just the time factor. It's the compounding of his money over time. He was a millionaire by 30, $1 million. Today, adjusted for inflation, 10 million. That's insane. I know. It's very impressive. So it's really, really interesting because he took, when he was 32, his $450,000 net worth, all of it, and plowed it into the business. What and, business? Well, his Berkshire Hathaway and all his investments with Charlie Munger. No sure. And two years later, that investment was, was worth 1.8. Wow. Yeah. That's, in, that's, I mean, if, to have the foresight of that is, is yeah, insane. Yeah, it's really, really cool. So what's even cooler is that for us regular people with maybe not $450,000 when you're 30, right? If you took that same age of 30, $25,000, which is somewhat reasonable for someone to have when they're 30, right? They got the same investment returns that he got annualized over his lifetime, which is 22%. Wow. Isn't that crazy? So $25,000 invested when you're 30 to when you are 60 at 22% annualized, 11.9 million. That's insane. Which is good. But it's not billions of dollars like him. It's like, what is he doing that others aren't? From everything I've researched, it's it's just time and it's compounding. Yeah, it's compounding. It's not pulling your money out of the market. I think a lot of people get scared when they're investing. Like them, that they let their emotions get the best of them. Um, and I'll touch upon this, but they ultimately pull out. I mean, if you look at the historic nature of the S and P five hundred, like it, it it grows over time. You know, you're you're compounding wealth, but when you're pulling your money instead of a dollar cost averaging, kind of setting it and forgetting it, you're pulling your money out and you let the emotions get the best of you. And that allows, you know, you're missing out on all that upside. Everyone thinks that they can time the market, but you, you can't, no one can. So just leave your money invested. Yeah. And I you, think that's what it probably he did. Do you, do, you, do you know that for a very small fraction of time that I invested in penny stocks? No way, like day, day trading or? I tried to. I, I, I will never forget this. I tried, to, I tried to do day trading of penny stocks. I invested $500. I'll never forget this. I was sitting at my cube desk at my previous job. This was, this was years back. And I was like watching it, watching it, watching it, you know, trying to do some work. And I got called and they're like, hey, Ryan, I need you to help me. And I had to get up from my desk and I had to go do, I had to leave for 30 minutes. That's so funny. I came back, all gone. Dude, that reminds me of the exact scene from Wolf of Wall Street where uh, Leonardo's like, Hey John, you mailed my company a postcard a few weeks back requesting some information about some penny stocks that had huge upside potential, <laughs> very little downside risk. Does that sound familiar, John? Dude, that, that scene is like the I epitome love that of that movie. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. Um, I want to talk about the investors a lot, man. This applies to every investor in the world, whether it's stocks, bonds, real estate, cryptocurrency, taro, I don't care. And it's like, why do people want to invest in the first place? And I think investing gives us a fighting chance to enjoy a comfortable life and a dignified retirement, but you know, we're all faced kind of with that same dilemma. And you know, we kind of have to take this risk to meet our financial needs, yet we're psychologically ill-equipped to do so, meaning that our brains are kind of telling us to make bad decisions and to pull out of the market when really you should stay invested. So um, there's a guy um, that I used to, he wrote a lot of books, Benjamin Graham, um, and he said it best, and it's the investor's chief problem and even his worst enemy is likely to be himself. And in investing, as I'm sure you know, there's something called the behavior gap, and I talked a lot, a lot about this in my previous job. Um, and I think we can all agree that the first rule of investing is buy low and sell high, yet most people sell when the market get, get volatile or choppy, and this is because they get scared and let their emotions get the best of them. And I think Warren Buffett did the opposite, and that's why he's so, so successful. And if you take a look over time, it's proven that stocks return about 10% a year but that actually doesn't account for what the investor return is. And it's because greed leads investors to buy high and sell low. And everyone thinks they can, they can time the market, but in reality, it's just not true. One of my favorite quotes from Warren Buffett is, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. And this couldn't be more true for us in real estate as well. And all this is saying is that when the market is experiencing uh, exuberance and everyone seems to be buying stocks or investments at high prices, it can signal that the market 
is overvalued or spec or in a speculative bubble. And in such times, I think Buffett at least advises caution because it's easy to get caught up in this euphoria and overlook the risk. But fearful means exercising prudence and avoiding the temptation to follow the crowd blindly, perhaps even reducing exposure to risky assets. And then on the other hand, part of that quote is, when there's widespread or panic, or panic or pessimism in the market, it often leads to undervaluation of quality assets. And during times, you know, Warren would suggest that beating greedy, uh, not in a reckless sense, but in terms of willing to buy when others are selling in fear. And, and all, what all this boils down to is, this, is having the courage to invest in solid companies or assets, which he's done a phenomenal job of. Um, that are trading at discount, just like how we buy real estate, yeah. trading at discount, and we do the whole cash out refinance thing. And and by doing that, you can capitalize on more opportunities and more market downturns. So, I think for the average Joe and the average investor, the bottom line is to have a plan and stick to it. I like to think of it like trying to cook, which I'm a terrible cook, uh, but <laughs> cooking without a recipe, and you're most likely going to have a terrible meal. And so. You know, it could come out fine, but stick to your plan, stick to your recipe, and don't let the emotion thinking you can time the market get the better of you. I think like three principles I always live by is just dollar cost average. Yeah, what does that mean? Dollar cost average, so plan to make regular investments in both climbing and falling markets and to take advantage of market volatility and create a long, sound term, like discipline and plan. Um, rebalance, I think that's really important in any um, you know investor's uh, kind of diary. Periodically take stocks out of your investments as market movements can, you know, sometimes cause imbalances. Um, you know, adjust to stay um, in line with your financial plan. So dollar cost average, rebalance, and then you mentioned it before compounding. So yeah. I think you had me thinking about rebalancing real yeah. quick. So I'm just thinking we just sold one of our office buildings. We're sort of rebalancing because the market is telling us that office is uh, a little shaky, right? Like, so we're like, okay, it was it was good when we bought it, we got it at a good price, but like now it's like we had a big tenant leave, and we're like, this really doesn't fit like our goals at the moment. Yeah, also like diversification, right? We had, you know, you should have a we have multifamily, you had office, we have some mixed use and retail, but we had three office buildings. We don't need three office no. buildings. So like, I'd say we were, we were too heavily invested in the totally office agree. sector and that, that's why we sold two of them and we'll keep the one that we're in today. So, you know, I, as it relates to compounding, Einstein once referred to compounding as the most powerful force in the universe, allowing something to grow organically, including our investments, and that can produce the greatest results. So, I mean, I think, um, I think Buffett's a genius. I mean, he's, he's obviously had one of the, one, he's one of the most successful investors in all of, probably history, um, and Charlie Munger right up there with him. So yeah. I think there's a lot that can be uh, taken from, from uh, his, uh, Absolutely. his years investing. Yeah. So. so as it relates to, I think there's a lot of things you can invest in. Um, obviously, cryptocurrency has become more <laughs> relevant now. As far as what I do, um, if I, let's say you make $100,000 a year um, and people are putting away for retirement, you know, I personally invest Probably too much in real estate, honestly. I probably, you know, out of a, you know, Same. say you have $100,000 to invest, I'd probably take 60% of that and invest in real estate. And then the other 40% would be in stocks where really it should be more diversified, but. I'm probably more than that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've definitely tried to take more money and invest in the stock market than. I've been very heavily real estate for the last right. five years. So I'm. I'm really trying to kind of invest more in the stock market and just kind of spread out that diversification. You're trying to hedge your bets. Yeah. If there's ever a downturn, yeah. you don't want to be too heavily invested in one particular area. Yeah. That's so. what it comes down to. So this is awesome talking about Warren Buffett and everything that he's done over the last, what, 70 years. He's got a ton of quotes, ton of rules. I really like the 70-30 rule for, for one example. But, um, you know, what's your favorite Warren Buffett quote? What, what's something that you live by that, that he has said in the past that has really changed how you invest. Would love to hear that. Leave it in the comments. With that, sky's the limit, and don't forget, like and subscribe.